Peter Parker is tied up off to the side and can only watch what is about to happen. It's he, like I'm making a giant sand dune oh. of Oreos. The trolling problem's been solved. And you're also talking about every mosquito in existence. If I was actually there, it would be completely different. Welcome back to Story Dive, everybody. I'm here with my co-host, Kai, and my name is Logan. I'll be your host today. We are here on the train, ready to give you guys the delectable, delicious content that you've come for. Truly, indeed. Have you been re like studying more words? Because every time you host one of these, you always say these like really awesome <laughs> words that I've just like never heard you say before. Um, I, I don't, I, I don't know. It just kind of like comes out of me. But uh, I have been playing Fire Emblem Three Houses, and the people in that game have a very sophisticated vocabulary. So that that has helped a little bit, I guess. Uh, um, okay. Sometimes they'll say stuff in that game, and I'm like, "What are you talking about?" And like, I have, I have no idea. But okay, so last week, um, we talked about it was creepy pastas, right? And I oh, had, yeah. I had Only my the cre creepiest. <laughs> yeah, you guys should go check it out. Listening, if you're interested in creepy pastas, we did a creepy pasta episode. Uh, we'll, it's we'll called probably... "Who Creeped in Your Pasta." Dude, it, it was pretty good. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it probably at the end of the video. Um, though I'll recommend it. Um, so, or if you're on Spotify, you could just search it up. So, but last week we ended, and I was gonna tell you my childhood creepy pasta. Um, oh yeah okay yeah and you uh, said that you said to save it for this week so i've been i've been waiting to, to tell it to you so we can we this could be the story of the week if you want unless you have another story you would like to tell oh no dude life has been boring <laughs> af boring nothing there's nothing interesting that's happened i've done absolute zilch from wednesday to wednesday whenever we record this Dang, nothing bro. just Not kidding no i I mean, my life is full of stuff. It's just full of the same stuff every week. So. Right, right. No no snakes under the door this time? Thank goodness. Gosh, <laughs> no. I, holy cow. I don't ever want to do that again. <laughs> but, you, okay, but you got a creepy pasta yes. for me. So um, growing up, uh, I would always go over. I was really good friends with these two brothers. They lived two houses down from me, right? So we were on the same street. They were my neighbors, essentially. And... You know, I would go over and hang out at their place all the time. And whenever I would go over there to hang out, we would hang out in their basement area, which was like it was like a giant loop with a staircase uh, going upstairs. But, you know, it was like a bunch of hallways and then like a living room. It was it was like a big loop. You know, you could walk around the whole thing like a big circle. And uh, I don't know why that's important to this story. But in the living room area, they, like I'm sure you've seen this in houses before. They had a like a little kids play area underneath the stairs. There, it had like the little window and the little door. I don't know if you've seen those in basements before. Yeah, like no, it's, it's a built-in playpen thing. Yes, yeah, yeah exactly. About. It's like a little, just like a little house for for kids to play. And usually there's like kids' toys and stuff in there. Um, but by the time I was hanging out with these guys, we were all like 14 and older. You know, and as the years would go on, we'd get older, and you know, this kids' room. Go figure. <laughs> there was always this eerie feeling when we were in that basement especially when the lights were off and it just so happened that we love to play this game that was essentially hide and seek in the dark. Um, but we called it snops and snobbers. I don't know why. I don't know why that's what we called it, but essentially what, cause <laughs> well, what's crazy about it's this really game, funny. what's crazy about this game is that you could only play it in that basement. Okay. Because what, what, what happened is you would all, it, which maybe because uh, there's, there's probably other games like this. Um, I'm not sure what, like people probably call them different stuff all the time because kids name kids games, all sorts of different stuff. Um, but essentially what would happen is because this whole basement was in a shape like a circle, like a donut, you would follow the, the guy who was it or the, the, the seeker or the, the leader, whoever you want to call it. You'd follow the guy and it'd be like you and like three other friends, right? And you're all following him. The lights are all off. Okay. And so you can barely see. Okay. You can only really see who's who's in front of you, right? 
and you all be walking yeah. and it's like essentially it's, it, whenever you want you can break off from the chain and go hide somewhere because you're walking through all these different rooms there's all these different hallways there's a bunch of different furniture and you'd break off from the 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 pack and go hide somewhere and if the guy that's leading or the, like the person who's it if they notice then they can like just they can start looking for you right and if they find you you have to get back in the line uh, and you, you would essentially okay. keep playing forever right until you get bored of it but uh, you know it, it would get really funny sometimes because like you would like break off and try to hide somewhere and like you would, you'd like secret you would just like tiptoe into a corner and just like sit there or lay on the floor or whatever but there was always that kid's room <laughs> and people would go and hide in there sometimes and there there were multiple occasions okay where we would hide it like someone would hide in that room and they would swear that there was someone else in that room with them hiding with them, but there's mm. there was nobody. Right. Ew, I hate it. Ew, I hate it. <laughs> right. Like, like I, there were multiple occasions of this happening. So like that basement felt like it was haunted. Right. Cause like we would play this game a lot. And as we would get older, you know, we would, it became like this, uh, creepy pasta, this like urban legend kind of like scary thing where, uh, and we came up with our own headcanon of it was because, you know, there was a, Dude, is it a snobber. Is <laughs> no. that what it is? <laughs> no, maybe. Um, so the, the two brothers um, that we, we we made it a story where the younger brother was actually a twin. So he had a twin brother named Brian who tragically died in an accident like years ago. And he was like the one haunting oh, that room. So like it, it's funny because we'd walk around the house and we would see pictures of this brother and we'd be like, oh, that's Brian. That was his twin. He just he, they were identical. It's like <laughs> so it was like this weird head uh, kid we had where it was like, oh, his twin brother tragically died and haunts that room now in the basement. Um, but yeah, um, that's Brian the ghost. That That's my creepypasta. Um, Dang. What the heck? <laughs> Yeah, um, you had some weird childhood experiences, or might have been really boring. I never made a creepy pasta <laughs> out of. I mean, I, it's not like we I, called I it a creepy pasta. So that's kind of weird. It's not like a, it was not like we called it a creepy pasta. But when you were explaining them to me, I'm like, I definitely have something that fits these parameters that we kind of like. Uh, okay, we, we'd spread okay. around as a kid, but like, you know, it's not like we we didn't like read creepy pastas and like didn't, we didn't come up with it like knowing it was one it was just kind of like the scary thing because I, like i said in the last episode i feel like uh kids just kind of come up with scary stories you know and like they can kind of turn into creepy pastas um i guess so but anyways that was my story of the week um and we're gonna hop into day, today's topic, Kai. Are, do you have any guesses okay. on what we're doing today? After that story, no idea, dude. What? Well, the? it's it's not related. You really let off with it. Oh, it's <laughs> okay. Well, then no. I have no idea. Um, dude, something about a train. Yes. Because we're in a train, and you specifically mentioned a train, even though you, you yeah, I don't know, you know, so you mention it every time, but still. I'm gonna send you a picture, and I want you to tell me if you're familiar with it. Okay. Viewers, you're going to be able to lock in on my screen and see exactly what I'm seeing the second I get it. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> no. I know this. <laughs> oh, no. It's a trolley problem. Are you familiar? Oh, are you, no. are you familiar oh with the do I problem? know trolley problems. <laughs> All right. Well, oh, if, if you're so familiar, gosh. would you like to explain to the audience in case nobody... In case someone in the audience hasn't heard of it before, what is the trolley yeah, sure. problem? So for the uneducated and the uh, naive, the trolley problem is it's a it's a problem. <laughs> Essentially, it stands for a problem that you can't solve. So the the classic trolley problem is a train is on the tracks and it's shooting down the track, and you can't stop it. That's like part of the thing is you can't right. stop it. It's either going to run over its current track, which there are five civilians, or you can have it switch a track and have it run over one doctor. Mm, um, interesting. Or I've heard it other ways, too. Well, there's there's yeah. ways to maneuver around it. But yeah, I, the I, gist yeah. is you must choose between two evils. 
And there is, as much as you might try to justify one choice, someone can come in and try and justify the other choice, the devil's advocate, really easily and kind of pick you apart, but you can pick them apart. And there's just no right answer. Yeah, so, yeah, that's absolutely right. Um, I think it it is cool that you introduced it as... more of a grander thing because usually when people think of the trolley problem they specifically think of the situation of there's one guy on the train tracks and versus there's multiple guys on the train tracks and you have to pick between them like there's a lever you have to pull and if you pull it it switches the track so it's there's this weird aspect of like you have a choice to either pull the lever or to just not interact with it which oh yeah like personal responsibility yeah it's this layer of like accountability where it's like the whole thing where it's like if you have information about something like if you watch someone get mugged like did you have any responsibility in stopping that if the train's gonna kill five people and you don't pull the lever then did you kill those people like that that's kind of like the grander side of it but i think that you're totally right when it's like either way you kind of lose like these are these are situations that don't really have a everybody wins outcome you know um uh-huh so yeah so that's the og which i guess we can i don't know if you want to give your two cents on the og trolley problem because uh i kind of have some some more interesting problems in store for today i was gonna say i'm sure because the trolley <laughs> problem as i was explaining it the trolley problem's been solved we've solved the trolley problem it's been explored okay, okay I, well hold on what i'm do you, guessing what do you mean that by you're that? going to <laughs> what do you mean by we I solved mean, it humanity already has an answer for it we've we've already determined the science between the original trolley problem it's old news i'm i'm thirsting for a problem that i still can't solve so hold on so what what's the answer then to kill the one instead of the five is that the answer? I don't know. I just know I don't have the answer. <laughs> okay. I know that there is an answer. The I answer is, is that there isn't an answer. I, that's actually pretty good. <laughs> that's actually a pretty good answer. Mm. Um, so yeah, yeah. Uh, just to make it super clear, the, the original problem is... Uh, I'll just read the prompt because there's a uh, prompt for the original. Um, and so I want you... Uh, I guess you don't have to if you want to, but I'm going to read this prompt and then I want you to tell me what you would do in this situation. Um, so the original prompt is, oh no, a trolley is heading towards five people. You can pull the lever to divert it to the other track, killing one person instead. What do you do? Right? Like that's the original. Uh huh. So if you were in this situation, Kai, what would you do? So I would have to make the choice in ending one life. At least one. Yeah. And I feel like usually this prompt, the original one is usually presented with like the, there's the one person who's like a quote unquote good person. And then the other five are like criminals or something. That's usually like how they present it where it's like you value one life over multiple lives or does it matter what kind of a person they are? Um, And again, if you don't want to answer this one specifically, I'm okay with that. If you're like, this is too hard. Like I give up. No, no, you're good. I would, I mean, taking context and nuance outside of it all, I probably would pull the lever only because, yes, it would make me personally responsible for what can be sort of equated to as kind of murder, question mark? But it's if, a little bit of a gray area. If you didn't pull the lever, would that also be a decision you made that makes you accountable for those five people? He, I probably, I'm kind of one of those people though, that I think I work better through action than I do in action. I am incredibly bad at inaction. I know. I am, no, I am well, notoriously awful at choosing not to do something over choosing to do, to make an action. That makes total sense. I was just stating that like, if you're pulling it because or if you're saying that pulling it makes you a murderer, I was I was arguing that not pulling it would also make you a murderer. Like there's that perspective where if you then don't- just on the grounds of no context, pulling it saves five lives. Or four yeah, no, you're right. It does save five. Yeah, yeah. I would I I would end up probably going for a numbers game. As soon as you add some nuance into it, 
then yeah, the whole gets, situation changes. It but. does. Like, honestly, that's my answer for most trolley problems that I'm presented with is it depends. <laughs> like, I need more information because if I was if I was actually <laughs> there, if I was actually there, it, it would be completely different. The vibes of it, like what my heart's telling me to do, like the emotions that are present, what the people are saying, like maybe like how, how fast is it going? All these things are different things that like you're not putting in like we're, we're only thinking of it as a black and white logic numbers game. Um, but it's just so funny to me that that answer because it's like <laughs> well, in real life, a trolley problem happens and you're in it's like your inner monologue is saying, oh, no, Logan, like, what do I do? I, if I could switch it this way, but then you and your answer to it is eh, maybe well, it's not, <laughs> eh, maybe That's it's funny. I need more information. Before I'm certain. Oh, okay. It's, okay. It's, that yeah. makes more sense. It's like it would be the the whole vibe behind that situation would be different. At least if it's portrayed the way it is in the picture, because they're all kind of close together in the picture, right? So there's a lot of details oh. that would change how someone feels about one of these issues. And again, it, it's not a great spot to be in <laughs> for anybody. Um, okay. Right. Because like, what about the conductor? Does he feel responsible? Okay. Anyways, we don't have to go into that. Um. <laughs> So th th now that we've established the original trolley problem, we're going to hop into what I've created for today, which I want to call the trolley problem derailed. Ooh, so we derailed. are, we are kind of going off the rails with this one. Um, <laughs> figuratively and maybe literally. Um, so I've come up with four. Off the rails. <laughs> I've come up with four situations here, which are like trolley esque problems, trolley problems that are, it's kind of like that, but they are customized to my, uh, like there's, they're suited to like things that I wanted to present to you, uh, and see what your answers are going to be. So, uh, first off, okay, uh, if sounds you good. lay it on me, I'm ready. <laughs> I'll answer correct every time. I'll get all the points. I know this game. <laughs> So there's no points to be earned here. It's just, it's all just like about the discussion. Okay. Um, That's what you want me to think. Right. Right. Um, okay. So it, for all of you watching or listening, um, I guess for watching, I don't know. You're not going to be able to see us on Spotify. So you can go over to YouTube if you want to see this, but for the thumbnail and the background of, of this video, um, I asked Kai before, before doing this podcast today, uh, if he could create a demon train for me that could not be stopped. And he did a great job coming up with this image. So, um, I, and I sent it in the chat so you can, you can have it for reference, Kai. This oh, yeah. Yeah, train. Does it have a name? Yes. I have named it the Unstoppable Super Demon Train of Speed and Death. Okay. So this is the trolley that we're dealing with today. He cannot be stopped by anything and will kill anything in its, in its path. Um, so any problem okay. we come up against today, just know that that's what you're dealing with. All right. Um, gotcha. Okay. So I'm going to present uh, does, you. Is there an acronym that I can remember the train by? Uh, USDTSD. No, that's not good. You can just call him the demon train for short. Ustad. Ustad did. <laughs> Yeah, Ustad, the big train, the big bad train. Ustad. Yeah, I got it. We're good. Okay, so I'm going to present you with the first problem. Are you ready? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so this, this is the first trolley problem of the day, the, the, the super demon train problem. Okay. Oh, no. The unstoppable super demon train of speed and death is heading towards every single mosquito in the entire world. If, like, once they are dead, they are all gone. From the entire world. They are extinct. Okay. There is also a complete stranger right. behind all of these mosquitoes who is also tied to the track. You can uh, you can't make out any details about this stranger, but you know that they're there. Okay. That's the first okay. track. Okay. Second, you can uh -huh. pull the lever, however, to divert the uh to divert the super demon train to the other track, destroying every single Oreo and Oreo factory currently present on Earth as well as killing three criminals who are already on death row. What do you do? And I, I want to preface that this isn't a yes or no situation. You are the one with the lever. 
Uh, you can get as creative as you want. Because we're off the rails with the prompts, we're also off the rails with the answers. So be as creative as you want with these answers. Um, okay. But yeah, that is your situation. That is your first problem. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. So there's there's a guy at the end of the mosquitoes, right? Yes, there's a stranger. You can't make them out. Now, this is only a matter of how do I make this happen? Let's see. <laughs> He's thinking, guys. Well, there's... Okay, I will preface this. The, <laughs> the man himself will be fine to sacrifice himself for the cause of, of eliminating mosquitoes. He gets oh, it. Well, how do you know that? He knows. And I know <laughs> that he knows. Because it's a... It's every mosquito in existence. Now, now hold on. This, that, that you don't, you don't know with this guy. You like we, we have to be under the assumption that unless you somehow are able to communicate with him before the train runs into him, you can't just like know telepathically. You know. No, but I don't have to. I just have to be a human. Well, well, because if and, you're if you're saying that like that sacrifice, if he understood, then he would he would get it. But maybe he doesn't understand I mean, the he, situation. Listen, I'll explain it to him later. And I'll tell him. <laughs> what do you mean later? You're what's gonna, up? You're going to kill him. What do you mean later? <laughs> I'll find him later. <laughs> and maybe, it could be many years later, but I'll find him later and be like, dude, you're a hero. Dude, I, uh, or <laughs> even and his, after his passing, he'll see. He'll see the good he did in the world. He'll know. So, 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 so you're, it's, it's, you're leaning on not pulling the lever and just letting it kill all the mosquitoes sort of but <laughs> because it's off the rails i'm not going to pull the lever because i don't necessarily have to what i'm going to do is the trolley while i know it's going super fast i know that there's a giant wall of mosquitoes that it needs to get through and there's a lot of mosquitoes in the world so it's going to have to kind of sludge through it that gives me a lot of time Okay. All right. An Oreo ramp. <laughs> an Oreo ramp. A ramp made of the Oreos. I can I can take that stuff. Hey, when you compact an Oreo down, dude, that thing gets it gets now, compact. Okay, but this is the. It's like I'm making a giant sand dune well, of Oreos, <laughs> and I, I will make a new track. I I respect the Oreo ramp, but I don't think it would stop the train because this train is. The unstoppable super demon train of speed and death. I don't think it's gonna. I don't think Oreos are gonna stop it. I don't need to stop it. I just need to get it in the air for a while. I want to shoot right over the guy. Okay, I see what you're saying. Because it's going so We're fast. redirecting it because you you still have to move it. But I have time to run over to the Oreos for it to get through every mosquito. I I've got time. I'll build a I'll build a ramp or so even just a bump. An Oreo bump. So you're not pulling the lever and are <laughs> building a ramp. Like, okay. In a way, it's weird how in a way this seems possible, this explanation you're giving. But in a way, it's also yeah. like a train going this fast. Mosquitoes, I don't know if mosquitoes would slow it down, you know? And if you compacted every mosquito in the world, how much space would that take up? You know? Dude, that's so, a good question. These are these are good questions, but I that that is a great answer. So I at the very least, this is what you would attempt to do. Yes, I I mean I would give it my best shot. I'm not a huge Oreo bump ramp <laughs> yeah. specialist. Hey, the cream so helps it. The cream, the, the cream helps it all stick together. You know, so yes, exactly. Like um, I don't know, I, I don't know if you've had like Oreo cream cheese like balls or whatever, but. If you mix, Dude, I have it, but those sound really good. If you like mix Oreos up, like I don't know, like it, it kind of makes this like gluey paste or whatever. So like, I don't know, dude. Maybe you might be onto something like brick and mortar, but like Oreos, you know. So that yes, that, exactly. That was that was a great answer, honestly. Um, and this is this is these are the kind of answers I'm looking for. So the second problem I think is going to be a little more interesting. Okay, according to a good friend named Gibbet. Uh, what? <laughs> wait, wait, who is this? Named Gibbet? BPT? BPT? Oh, GPT? 
Yes, yes, yes. Gibbet. Oh, Gibbet. My good friend Gibbet. I know who you're uh, talking about. Even accounting for predation, disease, and environmental conditions that would limit population growth, the sheer abundance of mosquitoes throughout history would likely number in the quadrillions or more. Oh, man. Okay. Well, you might be onto something then with, with how long it would take. So you might actually be able to pull that off. That, so that is crazy. Um, so yeah, that, is a, I, I, that was a fantastic answer, Kai. All right, are you ready for the next problem? Yes, I, not, not, I'm having Chimiti explore the mosquito thing, and it it is kind of saying that like mosquitoes uh, wouldn't do much on their own. Okay, let's see. Even if we imagine an impossibly dense swarm of mosquitoes, the collective force would likely have negligible effect on the train's trajectory of speed. So, oh, see, I don't know. See, I, I wouldn't. That's what I was saying. Not, it's not impossible is what I'm hearing. Well, see, and that, that's for a regular train. I'm talking about the super speed, speedo demon train. And you're also talking about every mosquito in existence. So, Well, uh, on, I'd, oh yeah, I did say like every, I didn't say on the planet, did I? I said that for the Oreos. So, yeah. So I, I'll, I'll give it to you. I feel like your answer is somehow totally possible. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. <laughs> And afterwards, you and that guy can go out and eat some Oreos and ce celebrate your victory. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, here's the next problem. Oh, no. The unstoppable super demon train of speed and death is heading towards Uncle Ben. Peter Parker is tied up off to the side and can only watch what is about to happen. You can pull the lever, however, to divert it the, uh, to the other track, killing Thomas and Martha Wayne, Bruce Wayne's parents, instead. Bruce Wayne is oh, also tied up to the side and can only watch what is about to happen. <laughs> so you're asking me to essentially determine the creation of either Spider-Man or Batman? Yes. Okay, <laughs> just wanted to but, confirm that. But this is also a chance to save Uncle Ben or to save Batman's parents, you know, depending. So you are still having to all choose right, right. who to kill. But both of these deaths do, you know, create the superheroes that we know and love today. So is it worth it to save lives to get the hero you want? Like, that's kind of the problem I'm presenting to you. Here's what I got to say about this. Both of these deaths are canon events. Like, we know this. It's a canon event. It happens. Mm, okay. What I will say is that Uncle Ben, what Uncle Ben represents and what Batman's parents represent are very, very different things. Because more often than not, well, I don't know, actually. I might be talking about him, but but here, but in my <laughs> mind, the I would probably lean more towards Uncle Ben, only because what Uncle Ben stands for in Spider-Man's life feels very different than what uh, what were the, the Waynes's mm. Mr. and Mrs. Wayne yes. seem to be for Batman, because Uncle Ben is kind of like his rock, his foundation. And he loses everything about his foundation with the passing of Uncle Ben. And it's kind of the catalyst to do what he wants to to be who he needs to be. Yes. But Batman kind of is able to get that. And he still has a support system in that he has like the lifelong friend, mother, Alfred. And well, But, you know, Peter has Aunt May, you know. I feel like it's. Yeah. Yeah. But like uh -huh. Peter loses Peter loses what's his bucket? Um Well he loses a lot of people, honestly. <laughs> it's very sad. He loses, yeah, pretty much everyone and anyone and everyone that he ever stood for. But what I'm saying is he he loses Uncle Ben as a result of him trying to be a hero or trying to learn how it works. 
Whereas, well, so wait, this, um, this Batman was... becomes a hero as a result. Well, so I, it was my understanding with Spider Man, and th this could make this problem more interesting. But it's it was my understanding that Spider Man did something that was a little selfish. He was using his powers to benefit himself, and that's what kind of caused Uncle Ben to die. And so that's why he had that shift to, to kind of like use his powers for good instead of like to benefit him. Um, and like, I, I, it's not like I've read all the comics and anything, but I remember in the movie, you know, it's like he go, he's doing like the wrestling stuff and like earning money. And yeah. he, he like went to go get revenge on a guy who like stole his money. Like, and it was like totally at like a, a revenge anger thing. And that's yes. kind of what led to, or no, 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 no. Well, hold on. He, he seeks him out after he kills uncle Ben, but like there was that, there was that certain situation where he, uh, he didn't do anything about it. That's what happened is that the, the guy that killed uncle Ben, he ran past Peter and Peter didn't do anything about it. He like had a feeling like he should, and then he didn't. And it ended up like coming back to bite him. Um, which is kind of what we're uh, talking about here with the trolley problem, right? It's like seeing something and not doing anything about it. Um, like he made a choice there. Um, and right. But it makes me wonder, right? If Peter is tied up next to the track, it's not like he has a choice. So would it have the same effects if uncle Ben died this way? You know, like, I guess that's, that's, I think it would actually have the Batman effect because Batman doesn't really have a choice when watching his parents leave. So I think Peter Parker would become Batman. Oh, and interesting. also, in order to make that happen, to make a spider bat or a, or a bat Spider Man, right? A, a, a Batman, <laughs> yeah. Um, in order to do that, I say flip the. We need to create that hero. The world needs that hero, and some things need to happen in order to make that happen. What I'm thinking is we need to. I'm going to, like, flick the lever, sort of, only to make it so that two of the wheels go on one side and two of the wheels go on the other. That way, now it's traveling, like, wide-wise oh. down both lanes. Oh. So you're going to kill both. <laughs> so now we're going to make <laughs> Batmans. Oh, my gosh. Wait, so, yeah, you're going to make... Because what, what if... Yeah, it's going to be Batman and like Spider-Man, but he's going to be like Batman. So maybe like Exactly. Like, it's kind of like black suit Spider-Man. So they're both going to just be like black vigilantes in terms of like their costume. The world needs those heroes. Yes. Oh my god. And gosh. if they come at me, <laughs> yeah. I will respond just the way that <laughs> Peter Parker responds. I missed the part where that's my problem. <laughs> I missed the dude, that's okay. Beautiful. That what a beautiful answer for this. All right. Rip Uncle Ben and and <laughs> Batman's parents, but they're necessary to further the 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 agenda of these superheroes that we the they do that that was awesome. Okay, all right. This next one I think is gonna be hard for you, but we'll see. It's it's definitely an interesting problem. Okay. Oh no. The unstoppable super demon train of speed and death is heading towards Casey Hudson. You can pull the lever to divert it to the other track, destroying every game he ever worked on, making it impossible for anyone to ever play one of those games ever again. And just to be clear, Casey Hudson is the main guy behind a lot of video games, including the Mass Effect trilogy. Um, oh, gosh. So he also worked on games such as Star Wars, The Knights of the Old Republic, uh, Never Winter Nights, Baldur's Gate 2, Shadows of Om, and MDK2, and Anthem, which, you know, it's, I don't think it's a shame if anyone never plays Anthem again. But the other games are important oh, man, to this conversation. Well, actually, you're just, I was about to say you're throwing shade, but more realistically, you're just speaking truth. Um. <laughs> So yeah, this is your problem. So you can either choose to kill the developer of these games and still play them, or all the games get destroyed and are wiped from the world, leaving no one able to play them ever again, but the developer gets to live on. Okay, so I have to, dis I have to determine the games or the person made the games? 
yeah the guy who made the game he's the main like I, i'm other people worked on these games obviously but he was like the main guy behind uh, a lot of these games um so. okay well if if i'm being honest this is probably one of the easier choices for me really <laughs> yeah <laughs> what would you, Dude, yeah for sure what would you pick i would pick the games bar mm -hmm. none because well okay so, so you present an interesting thought experiment right well, that's the whole point that, of this right <laughs> right but here's something i feel like maybe you're maybe it's just like a, a leap of logic for me but he, this uh how do i word this the person a life will to me a life will always supersede uh an object if it's it's a choice between a life and an object even though mass effect and it's that series has brought me so much joy in my lifetime even though it's the most one of the most amazing uh creations ever that man can always create it again Yes. It's not like okay, so it's gone forever. So I, that's what makes this an easy choice for me. Is I had this thought. Already... Yeah, no, sorry not to cut you off. Uh, you can finish your thought if you had more to say. Oh, that was it. I, I spoke. I, so you. I thought I thought about this. Um, so I guess my... Hmm. Because what should I tackle first? So the the thing is, this guy who made the games, and like I'm not throwing any shade towards him, like, you know, this is a trolley problem. We're trying to make it difficult here. Uh, I don't wish anything bad to happen to this guy. But if he were to pass away, it's like he's already had a career. He's already lived like a pretty long life. He's probably in his 40s. I actually tried to look his age up. I could not find it on the Internet. Um, so he's probably like, you know, well into his life. He's made all of these wonderful things. Uh, and if you look at it from short term, I feel like it's super easy to be like, yeah, let's save his life. But like, what if like thousands of years into the future, you know, like his games would live on. And if you get rid of the games and like they're gone and then he's going to be gone within, you know, 60 years or so. Um, but you know what I mean? So like, that's kind of like what we're gauging here. And I, I want to ask you, would it change your answer if after the games were destroyed or after this whole trolley thing was was taking place, uh, his like he's not able to make these games again. He can make other new games, but he cannot actually go back and try and remake or reproduce these games the way that they were. Right, but even in that situation, I will make them. I'll oh, make those games. Interesting. Uh, okay, that's something that's so great about a story is that it can be retold. In fact. That's mm. what most modern mythology, at least, at least from my understanding, modern mythology is not at all what it once was, what it was originally told to be. Like our understanding of Thor and Loki and and Asgard and stuff like that, nothing like nothing in the slightest like what it is in the original mythology. Like, dude, I I actually. I think I studied up on Loki himself. This mm. is kind of a tangent, but yeah. it'll make sense in the long run. Okay, we're okay. circling back. The train. I put the train in a loop, in a feedback loop. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> I'm just giving it a second to warm up. Yeah, yeah he's, he's doing donuts in the parking lot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so in the meantime, uh, it's. Ooh, what was I going to say? You were talking about uh, oh, no. Thor and Loki. Stuff. Oh yes, yes, Loki tragic story he's like the biggest victim that ever victimed it it's so sad <laughs> what happens to him what a way to put it <laughs> i know so, i know a little bit about it but i, I you know i i'm sure that there's a lot more to the story that i don't know about right but the the case in point is that the story um it changes it changes a lot over time and based on who's telling it um, and that's important because stories, I think in a lot of ways, stories are meant to be retold and that's a healthy thing for lots of stories to do. Yeah. So honestly, if it came between me allowing this person to live on and yes, he's had his career, but he still has a family. I would, at least yes, hope so. yes. I don't know. 
again, I don't wish anything to actually happen to this guy. It's more for the sake of discussion of like a creator versus his creation. Like what's right. And, and it's not just somebody, but it's somebody who has lived a pretty long life already and has already had like a decent amount of accomplishments and things. So it's like, uh, it is, it is an interesting conversation, right? Cause some, some creations can live on forever. So it's like, what's more important, you know? Like if I were to rephrase this with other creators and creations, I wonder if it would change. I just tried to pick something that you were yeah, fond of. That is so right. And I am very fond of Mass Effect, but at the end of the day, a story can live on and change and evolve, and that's okay. At least as long as it continues to keep the general theme of the story, I think. Right. Um, and, but I do think it's interesting because I feel like there are some people out there that might argue the opposite. I personally well, don't know no, where I would stand. We could make it. this really interesting. We could make this oh, really, really interesting yeah. and say the person is an inventor of some sort of medical technology or procedure. Okay, well, hold on, bro. You're you're getting ahead of yourself, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> slow slow, slow, the, <laughs> oh, no. slow the train just, down a little bit, okay? Or see, sorry. Well, so, okay. I, I take it out of its feedback, feedback loop. Run over <laughs> the game. Okay, wait, but I do have this question. If yeah. it runs over all iterations of all of those games does that mean it runs over like all of the computer towers that have those games downloaded for for the sake or, of like for the sake does it of run over <laughs> mass effect that's a digital concept for the sake like, of how, this what, conversation what? imagine that all the games were laying on the ground in their case like they would be but when it runs over it for some reason there's a shock wave that just destroys every exe rom everything across all of the computers all over the world there's no way to play this game anymore it's just it's white. just it's, a janky flash drive that's it, actually like it's a wiped. billion terabyte flash drive <laughs> it's totally wiped and the trauma of watching it's, it's last if it's small enough to go under the it's, train it's a magical, the trauma scares the flash drive so much it's a that it, it just wipes all of its data you, you know the mass effect trilogy it's a it's a magical version of it that's glowing and right before the train runs it over, it sucks in every version of the game from everywhere across the universe off of every, every hard drive. So, okay. Yeah, just for the sake of the conversation, dude, right? Imagine you you just spent 350 <laughs> hours getting to the ending. <laughs> no, dude, that only is so for the well, trolley see? problem to happen. Yeah, and you're saying that you're going to run over it. See, this is, these are things to consider. Oh, yeah, I'll, re <laughs> I'll ruin that person's life if it means saving a life. Well, I'm not going to ruin their life. I'm just going to ruin their night. Well, but see, what if you ruined a hundred thousand people's lives that are all playing it? You know, it's a story. It's a piece of entertainment. I, I know. I know. Why I, I have a hard time just. I'm it. just playing devil's advocate here. Ooh, okay? you lose <laughs> three hundred hours of your life. <laughs> More people do that playing Overwatch than well, and and anything else. Dying halfway through your life. Uh, you'd be losing a lot more time than that too. So I, exactly. I, I agree with you, uh, but I do think it's an interesting discussion. It is, uh, <laughs> Who's dismissed. Uh, <laughs> Ustad, take it away. Okay. On, on to round four, which is the final round. Oh, we're already on round. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, this one, it's funny. You mentioned, uh, our good old friend, uh, Gupta or whatever, because uh, I ah. de I decided to ask him to to make me the most absurd, insane trolley problem he could have, he could think of. And, ah, give it. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! And so I'm gonna present the last one, uh, which does not involve our friend, the Super Demon Train, unstoppable man of speed and death guy. Um. This is what chat GPT gave me for our prompt. Um, okay. okay. Here it goes. Instead of a trolley, it's a sentient teleporting toaster with a malfunctioning moral compass. On one track, what? there is a group of clones of historical figures who hold the secret to time travel. On the other, there's a colony of intelligent space hamsters who have discovered the cure for all diseases. And the toaster Ooh. is programmed to value breakfast over all else. What does it do? Not what do you do? What does the toaster do? 
What does the toaster do? <laughs> oh, um, remember it has a malfunctioning moral compass and values breakfast over all else. Right. So I guess the first determining factor, are we exploring this one together? Are we tag teaming yes. this? Let's tag like, team it. And then after I'll ask you if you, what you would do if you were the toaster. Okay. Okay. Like Arnold Armstrong. What is that his name? Arnold. What? Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yes. And the other guy in that one movie where they like slash pans epically yes. and it zooms uh-huh. in on their biceps. That's yeah, what we're doing Dylan. here. You've been pushing too many pencils. That guy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. I don't know what that movie is, but uh, that's a funny pre- scene. Predator? Question mark? I think it's Predator. What? Is that really in Predator? I think, I think so. <laughs> so Predator is so good just because Arnold is, he's a, he's a legend. But back okay. to this. Um, what would that toaster so, do? <laughs> I think the first thing we have to do is determine what it, which one is breakfast, because one of them is clones of humans, and the other one, well, okay, is a bunch it of hamsters. Actually, doesn't say humans. It says of a colony of in, no, no. It's it says historical figures, clones of historical figures. It doesn't mention anything about humans. So these could be historical figures from but, other planets. Right? Uh, I guess, but we wouldn't know where that is. <laughs> we'll see, but this is a, I mean, okay, so it is a toaster. My, my chat is, my search <laughs> engine is going to be weird. It, it is a toaster, which is a, like a human invention. And yeah, so I, we can be under the assumption that they're humans. Cause I feel like that is a fair argument. Um, but the, so they're, but they're clones. And they've figured out the secret to time travel. So, wait, wait. So hold okay. on, hold on. So this this presents a weird thing because you know time travel is weird in and of itself. There's the time travel that like is like unchangeable, and then there's like the time travel that creates new timelines, and then there's like the you know what I mean. There's so many different kinds of time travel. Um, but it makes me wonder that if time travel, if they figured out the secret, then what if they use time travel to save themselves or something? You know what I mean? That's exactly what I was gonna say. Is why not just learn the secret from them after they're dead and then go back to the trolley problem and like yeah wait so if, if you say they the have hamsters, that information them as a historical figure since they're clones it doesn't matter it, because they're clones they're yeah. not the actual historical figures the only oh. knowledge that they present invaluable is time travel so see, the you, reason get, you why learn that's... time travel from then you travel back yeah that's important you, you save the time travel guys and then time travel to before the hamsters die and save them too. Now, uh, that's interesting because we're talking about it, but we're forgetting that this is a toaster. We don't, we don't, we got to think of the eyes of the toaster. Yeah. What would it do? Um, no, no, you're right. So this what is what we, that's do? what we would do. Um, but the and, toaster doesn't uh, my, care about time travel. He can teleport. I've made a I've made a super 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 concerning search, and I, I just googled where is it completely legal to eat a hamster, and uh, there's surprisingly a lot. Most of the eastern world, except for like a couple countries in Africa and somewhere kind of down in Middle East, it is actually pretty legal. So is this an Australian oh, toaster? Man. Is it an Icelandic toaster? Is it Russian? We don't is know. It French. But I think the odds are good. If this is a toaster that is sentient, right? It must have been created by humans, right? So if a human programmed a toaster or a robot, right? Like a toaster, if it's programmed by a human, it's probably programmed to not eat humans or harm humans, right? So that it has to be the hamster. Uh, hamsters, yeah. It, it would probably choose hamsters because it's closer to a breakfast and it is legal to eat a hamster in a lot of states so if this is our uh super explorer australian toaster oh yeah even if it's got a uh breaking moral compass dude that's all more encouragement to go for the hamsters man yeah. yes they've cured all diseases but the toaster doesn't care he's well, just looking for breakfast well the thing is he would try he would try to kill the the hamsters but the time traveler guys would come in and save them because they have time travel. Or the hamsters would cure the disease of getting run over. <laughs> getting run over itis to just take this, yeah. drink this, and you'll, it'll be cured. 
Yeah. So wait. Exactly. If, if, They'll like, like reinflate afterward. If, just, so yeah, you know, this is the, I think this is this is the problem with this problem is that this is such a like the, the people involved in this are so ahead in terms of like technology and what they can do. I don't think a toaster could actually kill these things because if these hamsters are intelligent enough to come up with the cure to all diseases, they probably know how to defend themselves. Maybe they have a serum that turns their skin into steel or something or even better. Or maybe they like have a force field and it's like this toaster can't do anything to them, you know? So like, really this is a, this is a bug on a windshield kind of issue where the toaster makes no significant difference against either i guess things. not and you know he just values That's breakfast crazy. i guess you know so so well, is the toaster the friends that the hamsters and the people figures made along the way i guess i think that like honestly they would probably recruit the toaster or capture it and study it for the you know progression of science and stuff because they seem to be into that you know time travel and diseases they seem to be it's pretty also advanced. sentient toaster it's so sentient. i think there's, yeah. there's a lot to say yeah, the toaster has thoughts, but he's also his moral compass is malfunctioning. So that's interesting. Um, <laughs> like maybe he's he's gone maverick, you know? He's uh, gone maverick. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Mega Man X would show up and kill the toaster. Uh, that's my final answer. Um, wow, what a what an answer! <laughs> Where did that come from? That's well, that's just as absurd as the rest <laughs> of the thing. Well, because Mega Man X. Uh, his whole thing is he has a moral thing where he's a sentient robot that has to kill robots that are like turning against humanity. Um, that's what like Mavericks are in the Mega Man universe. If you're Maverick, it means that you're oh, ag dude, against I humans. Totally... So if the if the I thought you were talking about um Maverick like from Top Gun. No, but the, that made more sense to me than than no. I'm thinking were... in Mega Man terms. Uh, if you're a Maverick, you, you're anti-human, and it's. Usually when you, someone's declared a maverick, it's because their moral compass, quote unquote, starts malfunctioning um, due to the X or the, 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 what is it called? The Sigma virus or whatever, but it's a virus. So the hamsters could cure it. On a completely separate note, the Sigma virus sounds very different to something. I know. Like, right? It sounds very different in this day and age. It's, a, it it's like a virus that makes you a Sigma person it's like oh i'm a giga, i'm a giga chad no what are you gonna do uh, yeah no, you, now you're a sigma male like <laughs> <laughs> okay it's well, so it's um, like a virus you want to get yeah well that was my last problem um and yeah i kind of just wanted to today i wanted to talk about uh the trolley problem and kind of like give you some maybe some problems you haven't thought about before because it really is an interesting thing. And honestly, if, if you guys are writing stories or want to write stories, uh, giving your character dilemmas like this is a very good thing to do. Like, put them in situations that are hard like this because when you show someone who's like, when, like when someone's human and has to deal with these very human problems where nobody really walks away, uh, like, like nobody walks away with like unscathed or like there's not a winner in the end. Like those situations often are very good in storytelling because they're very relatable um, and just interesting psychologically. So um, come up with your own, come up with your own no, problem and put it in the comments. If dude, yes, please. We'll, we'll try to, we'll try to solve some of your trolley problems. But <laughs> yeah. on that note, this is an example. The aforementioned Spider-Man Almost his entire rogue gallery is full of trolley problems. Yes. The lizard, yes, he has to defeat the lizard to save the city, but also mm -hmm. the lizard is his college professor and one of his best friends. Right. Like, yes, yeah. he has to fight um, Green Goblin, but Green Goblin is his best friend's father yes, and someone who's trying dude. to recruit him into his, his company. And it's well, like, and there's Harry and there's Venom, and it's like everyone important to. Spider-Man ends up becoming his enemy. And it's like, dude, that's why, that's why Spider-Man's so good. And that's also why any other story with a problem like that might stand out to you. Or maybe it, like is more emotional or impactful. You know, it's like, gosh dang, man. Like these hard decisions are so interesting. So, dude, yeah. Helldivers 2, 
who would fight the bots or the bugs. That's the trolley problem. He can't shoot both. Right, that is right, true. It's like but... you can you can choose to eradicate one or the other. Which one's the the worse or evil? You know. Exactly. Or maybe you just Ooh, don't. Uh, you just you choose neither, and you just do what you want, and then. You know, but that's all, that's another decision you're making. So it's like the only way you choose neither is when you don't download Helldivers two. Mm, what, that's are you to, choosing what are you trying neither. to say, Kai? What are you trying to say to me? I'm uh, just presenting a, a trolley problem mm, of, of its okay. own. Okay, all right, all right. I see what you're doing. Well, that's all I'm saying. You got you got you got a problem to to figure out here. Yeah. Let's see. The yeah. log you take that that train, that bug train, and that bot train are getting ever closer to Super Earth. Yeah. Um, well, that's been today's episode. Thanks for joining us, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, <laughs> give a like or subscribe or give us a five rating on Spotify. Tell your friends, all that stuff. And uh, Kai, do you see, uh, I see a guy out the window coming up. He's standing by a lever. There's I some... see a guy. Wait, but what else is on the road? There's like a frog on the left and like a, he's got like a crown. And then on the right, there's like a, like a princess. Oh crap! Frog and a princess. Oh my gosh! Wait, I this. Okay, we gotta, we gotta. How do we flip it? We gotta go horizontal on this. You know, we gotta yeah, like yeah. drift. Open the window. Yeah, tell, style. You gotta tell the. You gotta tell yeah. the guy with the lever what to do. Okay. Hi. Oh, he's he's working too fast. Um,